Welcome to the Solution Point, where we talk about your solutions for your life, your business, and the law. And again, to welcome my uh, faithful co-host, Catalina. Hey, everybody. Great to see everybody, and virtually. All right. And so, you know, you guys, if you've been here before, you'll, you, you like the solutions, click the subscribe button, click the like button, uh, click whatever you need to on your different podcasters so that we can make sure that we can uh, get this message out to as many people as possible. Today, we have a very uh, special guest. He's going to, he's got a solution that a lot of us need help with. And, um, uh, I, I don't want to give too much away because we did talk a little bit off, off camera. So uh, today we have Juan Cruciel and uh, he's going to, to talk about a solution that he has for us. But first of all, Juan, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, and what, what you do and what's going on. Of course. So first of all, thank you for having me, Michael Catalina. It's a pleasure being with you. Um, I am a money manager by trade. I've been in finance all of my career. Um, initially started with uh, the old Chase Manhattan Bank. So this dates me a little bit. And then I, um, as the bank went through different mergers, I was with JP Morgan. Um, I was the head of investments for Central and South Texas. And now I manage a family office. So the Custos family office here uh, to whenever we can be helpful. Well, Juan, just before we get into your, into the question, tell us a little bit about what a family office is, because I think that's a, that's a, a, a pretty new term in, in, in the industry, or maybe it's not, but it, it's, it, was, it was new to me when we, when we first started talking. So the best way to think about a family office, we're all very used to companies having a board of directors, Right and they help to make decisions and acts as the right resources for a company. This, a family office does that for individuals, right? And so everybody's used to having uh, their lawyer, their accountant, possibly someone helping them with their finances. We bring all of that together and we create um, a, a board of directors for families. And so we will partner up and you and I partner up uh, on a couple of families and we partner up with uh, clients, accountants. And so we help them not only with their strategy in asset management, money management, but we also help with the strategy on their estate planning, on their taxes. A lot of clients may own companies, so we help kind of integrate that. And so really it is a board of directors for individuals. Right. And so that, that's, that's really great. Cause I, I always say, and I've said it in, in, in my books, um, business is a team sport. You need to have a team. Absolutely. All right. So thanks for clarifying that, especially for, for our viewers and listeners, because that's a new term for me. And I think that's going to be a good business model uh, moving, moving forward. So Let's let's get let's get to the the problem and the solution. Why don't you share with us what problem you you found the solution for? Absolutely. So, regardless of your wealth level, uh, a problem that we all have in the current economic uh, environment is low interest rates, right? And what to do with our cash? Right now, the Fed has really punished savers by having interest rates as low as they have been <clears throat> really since 2008, right? And so before you could save money and they will pay you for it, after the 2008 um, depression, they, incur they wanted to encourage people to invest, but people will still have cash. And so I always get asked, one, what do I do with my cash? How can I do a little better? <clears throat> and so I'll tell you a little bit about some of the strategies that you can implement. Okay, well, that, that, sounds, that sounds good because I, I know with a lot of the stimulus, um, you know, a lot of people have, have some available cash uh, that's just kind of sitting there. 
Um, and it's what, what do you do with it? Because it's Absolutely. it's not especially, it's not keeping up with inflation right now. Exactly. And so especially coming out of COVID um, with the market now at all time highs, people are a little bit more hesitant to pull the trigger and, and invest. And so my first take on it is you should always consider your own goals, talk to your financial advisor, and they will help you put a plan in place. But for the people who have cash, first of all, we have to revolutionize the way we think about cash. Cash is not all the same. You have to think about cash in three different ways. The first one is your day-to-day -day cash, right? And that is cash that you may need at a moment's notice, you're paying your credit card, you may have uh, an expense that's come up and you need to have access to it immediately. The second one is reserve cash. Reserve cash is cash that you may not need for nine to 12 months. Cash that you will know a week in advance before you need that cash, right? And so if you're planning a trip, but you don't have to pay for it, or taxes in April, or um, you are planning on buying a home, but it's not for some, that is reserve cash. <clears throat> the third piece is investable cash, right? And this is cash that you truly want it to be cash, but you really won't need for 12 to 18 months. And so you can kind of put it away for a little bit longer. And <clears throat> the real trick to it, Mike, <clears throat> excuse me, is you have to think about, even though you have to think about it in three different ways, eventually what you wanna get to is to have a blended yield for all your cash. And so some of your day-to-day -day cash will earn very little. Some of your investable cash will earn a little more. But the, the, the trick to it is look at it all combined. And I will give you some specific ideas and how to implement to meet those individual buckets, and then that will be become a full strategy. Yeah, and I, and I think you know one, one of the things just to kind of plus one on what you're saying, um, I think COVID and shutdowns and all of that has kind of made everybody really think about how much do you really need day to day because. Yes. When you couldn't go to Starbucks every morning to spend $5 for coffee, well, in a week, you had 25 bucks uh, mm -hmm. still in your pocket. And so now you have, you, you, you kind of re-evaluate uh, your, your actual needs uh, to, to spend cash. Uh, I think there was an article in the Wall Street Journal uh, yesterday talking about how when people move back home with from the kids move back with their families, yeah. their whole outlook on how they were spending money changed. So, you know, what you're talking about here, the, the day to day, I think was, you know, drastically reevaluated. Uh, and then having reserves, people are now thinking about having yeah. reserves, because I know, like in the 80s, it was spend as much as you can as fast exactly. as you can, because the world's going to end, uh, uh, and then having the investable cash. So I, I think I think that's that, that's great. Tell us a little bit about uh, how how to how to position our, our funds for to take advantage of your of your strategies. Of course. So everyone's a little different, uh, but if you are like most people, you want to have probably about two months worth of expenses, right? <clears throat> there are people who live. Uh, uh, kind of paycheck to paycheck, and that's fine, that is a strategy. But if you can kind of first put together one or two months, that is a good enough buffer. Now, again, if you have a little bit more cash, then what you start doing is, first of all, the first step for the day-to-day -day cash is a money market, right? And a money market will pay you probably nothing, but again, you need that money right away. Now, there are some fixed income vehicles. Right now, we're in an environment where people are starting to expect the Federal Reserve to start tapering, which means taking some money out of the economy. 
and possibly in a year, interest rates to start going higher. And when interest rates go higher, the value of bonds goes lower. But that's not the case for all bonds. There are some bonds that actually appreciate when interest rates go higher. So what does that look like? That looks like a floating coupon bond, right? As interest rates go higher, the coupon will adjust higher and the value will go up. Another one is mortgage-backed bonds, right? So think about the dynamics of a mortgage. When interest rates go higher, you are less likely to refinance your home, right? Because you'll be paying more. Mm -hmm. And so if you're less likely to refinance your, your mortgage, there is a more likelihood that you'll keep paying what you have. And so the value of a mortgage goes up, right? And that is kind of the opposite. When interest rates are going lower, you're gonna refinance. So the people who own that mortgage will not get your, your interest. They will just get the lump sum. So the strategy now is to be able to combine some of those um, bonds that appreciate according to your needs, right? And some of these bonds can be purchased individually, right? Some of them cannot, or, or it's harder. You need a much larger amount. But you can always find mutual funds that will invest in a very specific um, class. So there is a mutual fund that invests only in corporate floating rate bonds and loans. There is a mutual fund that only invests in mortgage-backed bonds. There is a, a mutual fund that I love that invests in floating coupon treasuries for those people who are very risk averse and you only want to buy a treasury. So um, another type of bond that normally appreciates in a rising rate environment is a mutual fund that will invest in bank preferreds. So if you think about a bank preferred, banks, a simple um, explanation of their business model is they will capture your deposit and then pay you very little and then they'll turn around and lend it to um, someone else and charge them more, right? And so a bank preferred is a preferred equity issued by a bank, but banks make more money when interest rates go higher because they'll still pay you very little, but they'll charge more on their loans. And then finally, corporate bonds, right? You are lending your money to a corporation and there's some very safe corporations like McDonald's, Coca-Cola that have the highest rating. And then there are smaller local companies that may uh, pay you a little bit more. But what's important to think is interest rates go up when the economy is doing better, right? And so if the economy is doing better, these corporations have a higher likelihood of repaying their debt, okay? So um, those are the tools that you will use in the strategy. Now, the key to this is, as I said, to do a combination of them, right? And so you can start with something that uh, is very, very safe, and it depends on the investor, the listener's uh, risk appetite. You can start with a little money market. Let's say, let's say you have $100, $50 in a money market, and $50 in a adjustable floating rate coupon treasury mutual fund. And so with that, that floating rate adjustable uh, treasury mutual fund will pay you around 50 basis points. So if you do $50 in nothing and $50 in something that pays you 50 basis points, well, your blended is now 25 basis points. You're right. already doing a little better than nothing, right? right? And so you can now start introducing a corporate bond mutual fund. So a corporate bond, again, think McDonald's, Coca-Cola, that one will pay you 
around one and a half percent. And so if you divided a third, a third, a third, right? Well, now your blended gets almost closer to 75, 80 basis points, almost 1% for cash, daily liquidity. Well, that's pretty good, right? And you can go there and start introducing other um, type of mutual funds, or you can buy the, um, the individual bonds. You can buy municipal bonds. Municipal bonds are tax-free. And then you have a little bit of bank preferreds in there. So you can actually get to about one and a half. And maybe by this time, you're only putting out of your $100, about $10 in the money market then you separate the other $90. And so you start playing with the risk and the interest rate that you get. And we can get to um, one and a half, almost 2% of um, yield, which is really pretty good. You got to think that the 10 year treasury today, it got to about as high as 162. It's come down to 153 but you almost have to own a treasury for 10 years to get that, right? And so this is an elegant solution to a simple problem that if you do the right mix and combination, you will get the right yield at the right risk profile for your listeners. Good. How uh, receptive have your clients been to this idea and, and how long have you kind of been implementing this uh, strategy? Well, I've been... I really started thinking differently about uh, cash in 2010, 2011, as the Fed was bringing their interest rate to zero and people had a lot of cash and there was still a lot of uncertainty. And I did this strategy of the way I think about cash and the way I help clients to put a portfolio together for their cash that will align with the risk so I've been doing it now for almost 10 years. And it's funny, in those 10 years, the economy has done really, really well, and then COVID. And, but the one constant is people are always nervous because there is always something. Maybe it's the election. Maybe it's, there is always some level of uncertainty. And so to be strategic, you can do a little better and even, uh, get close to inflation so yeah and and again Juan this is just your 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 cash part of your investment so the cash that the the, this is your 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 cash that that you have in in a in a form that you can access it quickly you know this is not talking about long-term investment for retirement and so so it it you know that just kind of builds up another layer but it sounds like you 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 have a similar strategy when you get into into this this chunk of investable cash that maybe you you don't it's not investable cash but we want to start doing investments exactly. so then you then got you start you start blending maybe more equities because now you can you you want a higher return, but you also uh, are looking at higher risk. Exactly. So, and but so you don't you need that money. Getting, you really start getting into portfolio construction right. for the overall um, assets that an individual or a family will have. We're not even talking equities right no. now. Yeah. We are still talking about only fixed income, fixed income that can go up in value as interest rates go higher, uh, but it's still cash. Right. I can imagine too, before you even decide where everything's going to go, you need to do kind of a personal or a family assessment of, okay, what, how much day-to-day cash do I really need um, have there been some wake up moments with your clients? They're like, no, 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 we just need this much. And then they realize, no, I need this. Or, you know what I mean? That when they finally go through the exercise, they realize that they were off the mark and, and maybe that was a good la- enlightening experience. Absolutely. That's a great question, uh, Catalina. So yes, I can think of several examples where money and cash is such a, an emotional aspect right and so people want to kind of hold it keep it close to your chest your savings 
and when am I going to need it? But then when you help someone to put together a budget and you say, okay, let's keep together two months. Okay, let's keep together three months worth of your expenses. Or let's keep together, again, nine months, right? Let's think about your day-to-day -day for nine months and we'll set it aside. It'll be there in a money market. The minute you need it, it'll be there and it's a dollar in, dollar out. Then people breathe a little bit easier and say, okay, well now with this amount, we don't need to have the $200 there. We only need this much. And we can kind of take a little bit more risk and that will pay us more. And that means that the overall combination of the two starts getting more, right? Mm -hmm. And people always have in mind tuition, new car, the rent, utilities. But then you start thinking like, well, the new car is probably not gonna be for a year and tuition may not be till my kid is in college. And, and it, it helps to be organized and putting together a budget that becomes the foundation to build on this strategy. Right, very good. Yeah, yeah I can just see myself and well, uh, I'm more the internal operations person, right? So it's like, okay, yes, I put that cash away, but if I need it, which ATM do I use? And <laughs> what card, do I, where do I pull that money out? But it's, it's like you said, it's, it's very personal. People want to still be able to feel that they can touch their money. Yes, exactly. But they also want to see it a little bit uh, to grow. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's, I guess that's one of the big, you know, things that, that everybody has to, to uh, address is how much cash do I need to have access to? Uh, you know, I see that sometimes in clients uh, that they have a huge war chest in their company. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why do you need that much cash? Yeah. Well, I want to be able to, if I like a tractor, I want to just be able to cut a check and buy it. And I'm here like, well, is that really the best thing to do is have this in your operating business with the highest risk, you know? So you know, we start having those same conversations of, of maybe moving cash out of a higher risk uh, pool that's not getting any interest, but it's but it's creating a, a, a target. Liability. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. And sometimes, look, maybe you will buy a tractor in the next nine months, but you don't need to have the value of three tractors there. Right? Right. Let's leave enough for yeah. one tractor. Right, right, and and that's that's kind of the conversations that 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 I think people need to have with their different with their board with their with their team of advisors to Absolutely. say to say, well, this is these are my goals, and I want to be able to do that, and then kind of have the realization, well, you may be better off leveraging it with interest rates so low because that's that could be that you could be getting you could almost be making interest because it's so such a low uh, uh, price compared and, to what you're going to be able to generate. You're introducing a whole new variable yeah. where a lot of people have the cash and then they'll ask you, why do I need to borrow? And leveraging is not um, because you have to. It's a very useful tool, right? Yeah. And so a lot of our clients don't borrow because they have to. They borrow because it's a smart thing to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. That's great. That this is a this is a very enlightening conversation. Is, is you know kind of what what to what to do with your cash and what I really appreciate with with your with your answer, like you said, this very elegant answer, is that this could be something that I can show. Uh, we can show our kids. And they, they do our editing. So they're going to listen to this and they may say, okay, well, I have a hundred dollars. Where can, how can I do that? What are you Absolutely. talking about? And, and so, <clears throat> so it's something that's accessible to, to pretty much everybody. Everybody, everybody. And, yes. and so, so that's, I think that's, what's great is it, it, of your example is it's just a matter of how many zeros do you want to add to the end of that hundred dollars? Exactly. And, and mm -hmm. then how much do you feel needs to be in cash? And then how much do you want to move to the next level? Exactly. And, and, Put and, it away for the long term. 
Exactly. <laughs> so they, they can they can talk to you about that. Now that's I mean, man, that that's a lot of a, a lot of information, a lot of good insight. So we'll, what, what I think we, we can do right now is let's, let's go on to the next part of, of, our, of our program and talk about the, your, your core value. And again, uh, to remind our listeners, we, we like to have core values shared by our guests. We, we have a set of core values that we live through, we live by when we make decisions in our business. And it helps us to be able to make decisions quickly and consistently because we have a set a set of rules that we follow and that helps helps guide us and sometimes things that we think would normally be on the fence can be very clear once you focus them through the lens of your core values so uh juan why don't don't you tell us tell us your your core value and 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 you can elaborate on that absolutely so when mike and catalina told me you have to think of your core value. I, I was thinking about so many things, stuff that, uh, that I teach my kids, uh, things for business. I want it to be useful for everyone. I could hear my mother still uh, teaching me. And what I settled, which I think is a great summary and something that everyone can use and we can all live with, and it will make this world a better place is the golden rule. And that is treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I think it applies to businesses. I think it applies to individual relationships. I think it applies to parenting. Um, And it, it, it involves so many other things of respect. Um, And, and so uh, another simple but elegant answer which yeah. is do to others as you want to do to yourself you want to be treated very good and i just to kind of plus one on that and it's i i love hearing core values um because it just kind of helps center us and we we use them for business but we use them for life too and i want to share with with you guys and i, I shared with mike a couple of days ago uh we picked up our five and three-year-old from from school and the five-year-old says mom what's the high road I was like, oh, this is a doozy. Okay, great. So we talked about, you know, what's an example of taking the high road and taking the low road? And I think that has a lot to do also with the golden rule. You know, you could, uh, I, I gave her an example, like say if someone bumped into you in, you know, in the classroom and they bumped into you, but it was an accident. So taking the low road would tell, you'd tell the person, hey, why'd you bump into me? and jerk or you know use some type of demeaning insult but the high road would be oh i'm sorry you know did you bump into me oh oh yeah and you know allow for that discourse of of just the accident happening and not jumping to that conclusion so i but i i now she's she's you know oh is this the high road mom or no I, that's a low road and so she's <laughs> using that but it, the golden rule has a lot to do with that because of course. would you want someone to you know to insult you to jump to conclusions to be impulsive when all it was was a harmless accident or just you know whatever the case may be and I think that has a a a lot to do with our culture we become so impulsive of the immediate thing that we you know and we're already expecting an insult and and it's so it's but no it's we treat each other you we want to be treated in you know in in the high road right and so we we keep that on but I like that. And, and, and Charlotte is, uh, she's learning all about the high road right now this week. Oh, so. Good for her. That's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. And, and, you know, you know, even though it's, it, 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 it seems like, well, the golden rule is, 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 you know, overused. Well, if you look, if you just look at social media, if you look at the news, it's, oh, yeah. it, it's, you know, these, these politicians, these, exactly. you know, sports people, you know, everybody could could use a refresher go back to look (laughs) at it because you know basics yeah if you if if you you know if you treat somebody with respect they'll treat you with respect if you disrespect somebody guess what they're going to disrespect you because that's the example that's 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 what you've shown them this is how i want you to treat me Mm -hmm. i'm going to treat you bad because i want you to treat me bad yeah and, yeah, and people don't people don't think of it 
you know, that it's a two way street, right? You know, when if you you treat others the way you want to, them to be to treat you. Yeah. So if you treat them badly, that means you want them to treat you badly. Yeah. And and so taking that deep dive is, is is something that, you know, I wish I wish more of our public uh, people would would uh, observe because mm -hmm. unfortunately or fortunately uh, people are watching and, and our kids are watching and, mm -hmm. and they see they see the way certain certain celebrities act and, you know, kids don't do what you tell them. Kids do what they see you do. Yeah. And, and especially in today's uh, day and age where everyone is seeing everything mm -hmm. and it's recorded there for posterity and everyone can access with a couple of clicks. Yeah. It would do a lot better for everyone to see the golden rule in action. Yeah. Yeah. And just on that point, I'm glad that we didn't have all the social media in the 80s when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Juan. Uh, how can people contact you? We'll put, uh, of course, your contact information in the description of this video, but how would you like them to reach you? Absolutely. Uh, if they want to reach me with an email, uh, that is perfect. Uh, email or my, my phone, it's, I'm happy to answer questions, happy to be a resource, um, happy to take feedback. If anybody has an, a, a different opinion, we'd love to talk about this. I'm, I'm passionate about it. So anything i'm here sounds good we'll go ahead and put that in the description and as we mentioned before if you like uh the content that you're seeing on this channel and i know i'm stealing your line honey uh <laughs> you can do this they part. might listen to you <laughs> yeah do this part please uh like our channel we would definitely juan please like our channel and subscribe as well we need to we need to do a better job to get uh more subscribers for sure because uh, fortunately, God, uh, God has blessed us with some great speakers like yourselves. We have some great information to get out to everybody, and we want to share these solutions uh, about life, business, and the law with as many people as possible. So go ahead and subscribe and like, and uh, so we can share this content out. Thanks so much, everybody. Right. We'll see you, you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.